I'm Ben McMorrin and I've been asked to film 2019's Cromarty Film Festival. Tonight is the night before the film festival starts and I was asked by this guy called Dave Newman who's one of the lovely members of the Cromarty Filmmaking Committee I think that's what it is but all those people are absolutely lovely and what they've asked me to pretty much do is to go around filming them setting up for the festival all the events that pretty much happen at the film festival and just really all the things in between to be honest and because this is my favorite film festival mainly because it's the only film festival I've ever been to I said yes so what I'm basically going to attempt to do is to grab all this bunch of footage uh, piece them all together and try to create some sort of documentary-esque video around the Cromarty Film Festival. So with that, I hope you enjoy. I arrived early into Cromarty on the Friday listening to the sweet, sweet sounds of Boney M and I decided to go in and speak to Dave about what he basically wanted me to do, what was the plan, and uh, obviously give me all the equipment I needed. Um, but anyway, later I joined him in the hub where I met all the lovely members of the festival team. One that definitely stood out to me was this gentleman named Ben. There was almost this aura around him, just, just there was just something different uh, and it really drew me to him. Uh, and also additionally I knew him quite a bit because I'm actually friends with his son. But more importantly, they discussed important film business things that the committee needed to discuss. Like who was going to set up certain events and who was going to go get certain guests and everything. So that was basically me off. I had to follow them around picking up on stuff that they did. But what I basically gathered from it was that their main goal was to get everything ready for the lighthouse opening. But as the festival went on, day turned to night, and there's this indescribable, almost, buzz in the atmosphere. And I've never seen any other festival, mainly because I've never been to any other, but that's not really the point. The point is, is that it got me really, really excited. So as it got closer to 6.30, people began to like shuffle into the car park and huddle around this giant, almost trough-like fire. But besides that, the only light source was this giant projection on the side of the lighthouse. And it really just shows how special the Cromarty Film Festival is because <laughs> I've never seen that at any other festival. It's really cool. And as everyone looked up at the top of the lighthouse, I think everyone was really amazed. So that was the festival officially off and running. And people then went to Victoria Hall to see... Leslie Riddick, the first guest of the festival, talk. She was interviewed by Mr. Schroeder. He's a teacher of mine. Uh, I don't actually know his first name. But he's a delightful guy as well. And then everyone sat down and watched A Long Kiss Goodnight by Shane Black. And with that said, that was the end of the first day. So the next morning came and this year at the Comedy Festival, the Screen Machine returned for another year and was showing Toy Story 4 first. I got the opportunity to speak to the man behind the machine, Ian McCall. What I gathered from meeting him was that he was just this genuinely lovely guy who loved his job. I won't go into any more detail because I actually have a really good interview with him. I'm Ian McCall, the senior operator of the Screen Machine Mobile Cinema. Uh, been doing this job 21 years now and we've been coming here to Cromarty, this is our fifth year, uh, which is a great, great wee festival to do. Friendly, local and intimate uh, is probably the word, and a great programme. It's uh, a great and varied programme for everyone. Uh, you know, it's uh, <coughs> some challenging, some funny, uh, some really quite harrowing, you know, but that's the way a festival should be. You know, it's bringing the people out, 
and uh, long may we continue to be associated with it. So, you know, the favourite part for me is coming back to Milder Cup here once a year, and uh, they're like old friends. <coughs> you know, I could meet people again after five years, you get to know them, and uh, you get a welcome, which is what actually happens in the screen machine no matter where it goes when you build up a regular pattern of visits. Uh, and this is no different, you know, people are welcoming the screen machine back and welcoming me back, which is great, it makes me feel good, it makes my job a lot easier as well. So whilst I was interviewing Ian in the screen machine, I realised there was uh, another event happening across the other end of Cromarty on animation and sound by Kat Bruce and Keith Duncan. Kat is this award-winning animator and director based in Edinburgh and just a wonderful person in general. But then so was Keith, who is a musician, sound engineer and sound designer who runs a studio in Edinburgh's Summer Hall. Their goal basically at the festival is to create an animation with the people at their event that will then be shown at the finale on the last day. But they aren't done yet, so we will check back on them in a bit. They have about another day of work. So that meant for a few hours I had free time, so I decided to donder over to the Cromarty Bakery and grab myself some chicken turnovers and a donut of some kind. But as I was going about, I remember Dave mentioning to me that there's this really cool thing going on at the library. So that was when I met Mark. Right, okay, hi. Uh, I'll start again. <laughs> Hello, I'm Mark Stevens, um, here at the film festival showing off these creations of mine. Um, most of them made out of found objects and uh, broken hoovers and traffic bollards and a street light underneath that one with a hoover. And I've been doing this since 1978 when I saw Star Wars and just thought I wanted to make a spaceship, but of course there were no kits available. So I just started taking things to pieces and building whatever I could construct out of what I found. So I've been doing that since 1978, as I said, and then came back here after a few years in Australia and carried on doing it. And I've been doing it ever since. Well, the new project is going to be based on this object, which I found in a friend's shed. And it's basically um, a thing for joining underground electrical cables. The cables are joined, and then this piece is put around them, and then they pour resin in the top, and it all sets inside and seals the thing from water. So this is going to be... I, I thought at first it was going to be a bit like Jacques Picard's bath escape, but I think I'm going to make it into a big spider. And then after that, I went off to see the Grand Budapest Hotel with my friends at the Slaughterhouse. This was one of the numerous places within Cromarty that were basically helping and supporting the film festival. In any way they could, for example, the Slaughterhouse, they decided to show a bunch of films. I got a chance to interview Finley McNaught, one of the up-and-coming talents in the business. Not the film business, the Slaughterhouse business. 17 years old and I've lived in Cromarty all my life. <laughs> That's good, yeah. What's it like, like working here when the whole festival's coming around? Yeah, well it's just, it's really busy so it's just a good buzz about the place and Cromarty's filled with people. Um, it's nice people just hopping from venue to venue and I mean we get quiet patches when everyone's at movies and then we get a bit of an onslaught in between so yeah, no, it's really good. Have you worked at all at any of the films that have been shown at Slaughterhouse? No, I haven't. No, I can. I didn't get an opportunity because I was revising for my prelims. But um, from what I heard, it was a success. So after that lovely film, I popped over to the screen machine to wrap up the day with Eighth Grade, an incredibly powerful piece of cinema by Bo Burnham. So this was the final day of the festival and I decided to pop into the animation workshop again to check up on Kat and Keith who have pretty much almost completed their uh, project. Obviously I'm not going to show you what they made, that is for the end of the festival, for the finale, but I can assure you it's pretty good. So that'll have to tide you over for now. After I checked on them I then went over to the old boy store to watch the Scottish shorts. The friends I went with aren't really the biggest fan of the whole short film part so they get pretty pissed off when it's actually my favorite part i love seeing what other scottish filmmakers are doing but this is where it really 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 gets good i then went to ben lation's house the guy i mentioned at the start he has this like whole cinema thing in his house and he was very kind to host salt of the earth yeah so i'm ben and this is my house 
and I'm sharing a film here today. So it's called Salt of the Earth. It's an amazing film about the Brazilian photographer, Sebastião Salgado. And it's all about his work, it's about his philosophy, and it's just an extraordinary film. So I'm really looking forward to showing that. Uh, I think there might be quite a few people coming, but I've only got room for 12, so uh, <laughs> I might have to turn a few people away. Come along, how's it all going? Has it gone well? Has it been smooth sailing, or has it been like a bit rough? Yeah, well, I've only been getting ready today. Um, uh, there was quite a few people that were working on it yesterday. Um, so I think they've done most of the work. But today we've got a few problems, so a bulb blue. And we've got a few guests that aren't feeling very well and might not turn up on time. Um, and we've lost the DVD player. So uh, after this, I'm going to try and locate the DVD player. And uh, we're missing a lead as well. So, But apart from that, everything's going swimmingly. And um, we've been doing it now for 13 years, and I think we're finally cracked it so <laughs> after that time in the lation home i went up to the stables to listen to stuart wilson hello this is me interjecting from like four weeks and or like i don't know maybe i don't know how long this was like a good couple months into the future basically this guy went off uh because i got the chance to interview him and we discussed his projects he's done in the past and the projects he's done in the future done in the future he's done uh like 1917 for example and he basically won an oscar for that uh, so congratulations to him I guess I hope he sees this this would be kind of cool we then watched his film 24 hour party people which was a pretty good movie I have to admit and I must say people really really seem to enjoy it but now the finale everyone met back at Victoria Hall for a curry meal and it said on the program that the food was delicious I can concur it was pretty delicious Um, it arrived like 20 minutes late but that's all good it was still scrumptious then some guests spoke on stage and the members of the filmmaking comedy team went up there and thanked everyone for being part of the film festival, which was really lovely. They really got across that they had such a passion for what they were putting on. and They decided to put on Won't You Be My Neighbour, a documentary on the life and philosophies of Fred Rogers. And that's when I felt it was a truly perfect note to end on. That is the end of the Cromarty Film Festival. I've been going for around three years now and every single year I keep getting more and more involved pretty much. And meeting all these people who have such like a love for film in such a unique place like Cromarty means a lot to me. And when my friend Joseph told me about the film festival, uh, when we first started hanging out, it was a way that I could get to know him and connect with him and build on our friendship. So that's why it's really, really sad to hear that the festival might not be a thing in a few years mainly due to funding so this documentary is basically just a really big thank you to all the people that made it so amazing genuinely it's it's one of my favorite times and from the bottom of my heart i just wanted to say thank you for you know creating such a such a cool film festival Maggie and Millie and Molly and May went down to the beach to play one day. Huh. And Maggie discovered a shell that sang. So sweetly she couldn't remember her troubles and... Millie befriended a stranded star whose rays five languid fingers were. And Molly was chased by a horrible thing which raced sideways while blowing bubbles and... May came home with a smooth round stone. As small as a world and as large as a loan. For whatever we lose, like a you or a me, so is ourselves we find in the sea.